Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. How long will your antibodies last for after a vaccine? How long will your antibodies last for after an infection? These are two of the most common questions that I've been receiving over the last few months. And the short answer to this question is, how long is a piece of string? Yes, how long is a piece of string? That may seem like an unsatisfactory answer, but the truth is that there is no easy answer to this question because the concept and topic of immunity is immensely complicated and highly individual. And I think part of our desire, our quest to want an easy answer here, is modern day society. We are full of the desire for quick and easy fixes and answers to things when often they don't exist. We want to hear something like, oh, your immunity will last for 6.3 months. That study showed that antibodies last for 8.9 months. This is, of course, complete and utter trash. Let's think about the topic of immunity here. Now, there are only two ways for any human or any animal to get immunity. Either you suffer through an infection and get immunity that way, your own antibodies, or you get a vaccine, hopefully in advance of an infection, and get immunity and antibodies that way. And obviously it goes without saying, out of those two options, if there's a safe and effective vaccine available, this could apply to any pathogen, that is obviously a far better and safer way to get immunity than suffering through an infection. And with regards to when you've actually developed immunity, again, highly complicated, there's different cells involved, there's B cells, there's memory T cells, and your antibodies will wane over time. But hopefully you will keep those memory T cells. I heard it put very well recently by somebody that if your antibodies stayed in your bloodstream at the same levels after infections, your blood would literally be as thick as molasses by the time you reached adulthood. They do wane with time, but you do retain some T cell memory. What we know about this immunity that anybody can develop is that it's highly individual. And you all know this from even looking around you at your family members. You may have different experiences over the years. People respond very differently. You may, once you've got immunity, never again have the illness. You may repeatedly suffer with the illness every year. I'm thinking of other illnesses like the flu. Then there's some people out there who seem never even to develop symptoms. And if we think over the last 18 months to all the stories we saw right at the beginning of the pandemic to all of these asymptomatic people out there, presumably that was their immune system kicking in and they didn't develop any symptoms. The virus didn't propagate in them. I'd like to focus here though on four factors that will determine any individual's immune response. Number one, age. We know that younger people, especially children, have the most robust immune responses. And then there are dramatic drop-offs in the elderly in terms of their immune response. And from an evolutionary biology perspective, this obviously makes sense. Survival of the species, remember, you want the young to have the best possible chance of surviving into adulthood. And that may be a big reason why they have the strongest immune systems. Number two is genetics. We cannot underestimate the role of genetics in any illness out there. And what we've seen over the last 18 months is that there are certain families that appear very prone to more severe illness. And presumably that is a large part down to a genetic component. Number three, environment. Anybody's immediate environment will also likely play a role in their immune response. And number four, baseline metabolic health. This is obviously my main area of interest and what I find disappointing. This is probably the one factor that is most in people's control. Now there are exceptions to that, obviously in the very elderly or people who are unfortunate enough to suffer with any chronic medical illness. But for most people, their metabolic health is well in their control. And what is terribly disappointing is that this has been the one factor, despite being the most in our control, that many authorities, including medical authorities, media, government, have talked the least about. What are the factors that determine baseline metabolic health? Well, most of us already know these. Diet, are we eating the right types of food? Are we exercising? Are we doing our best to stay in shape? Are we sleeping enough? Are we doing our best to manage any stress in our lives? Your immune health can fluctuate along with your metabolic health. 
And if you are going through times in your life when your immune system is suppressed for whatever reason that is, you're not sleeping well, you're stressed, you're not eating right, you're not exercising, all of those potentially can depress your immune system and make you more prone to an infection. And I'm talking about many common pathogens here being ready to attack you if your immune system is depressed for any reason whatsoever. Never underestimate that. So those are the four factors I can think of, age, genetics, environment, and baseline metabolic health. But coming back to the main questions then, there is no easy answer. The best you could probably do is get an average for your unique demographic, but that may be difficult as well. Many factors are not in your control, but many factors are in your control, especially as they pertain to your metabolic health, your baseline metabolic health. And I'd like this to be the take home message of this video. Whatever stage you're at, whatever your immune status, even if you just got vaccinated within the last several weeks, Always remember the importance of doing your best to maintain good and optimal metabolic baseline health. It will do a tremendous amount for you going forward in maintaining optimal, strong, robust immune health. Thanks everyone for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, MedStroke Lifestyle Medicine. We'll speak again next time.